On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, where did all the ships off Los Angeles go? I'm your host, Adam Cogliano. If you're new to the channel, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. So, the disappearance of the ships off the port of Los Angeles and Long Beach. This had been a bedrock issue during the supply chain crisis last year. Over 100 ships at one point milling around off LA and Long Beach, but now we're down to just a handful of ships, almost a dozen. And the question becomes, where did the ships go? And more importantly, what's happening with ocean freight rates? Everybody's talking about them dropping and plunging off a cliff, but where are they really? And what should we be looking forward to for the rest of 2022? All right, let's jump into this story. So first, let's go take a look at the Port of Los Angeles today, September 6th of 2022 this is the combined ports of la and long beach and you can basically do the draw uh, basically dividing line right here along navy way that's basically a dividing line to the left is la to the right or the east is long beach and you have a series of terminals here that operate within the port of la first up here in the very upper region here on the upper left you have what's called the w uh, wbct terminal and you'll notice right here of the terminal, there's a, there's a lower part and an upper part. There's only one ship sitting in there right now, a Mediterranean shipping company ship, uh, the city of B, only ship that's in there right now. So this means that the terminal doesn't have a lot of shipping on it. And that's a significant issue. Back during the height of the supply chain crisis, these berths were jam-packed. We have the tray pack terminal. And what you see here is three vessels up here, the Renjian 26, the YM tutorial, this is a Yangmin vessel, and then the ONE Arcadia up there. So right there, Trey Pack is busy, three vessels on berth, they're moving in. Next, the YTI berth, uh, no vessels on berth at all on YTI. This is Everport and two Evergreen ships, the Ever Lotus and the Ever Learned are up against the berth. So they're operating basically at their full capacity. Come on down here to Phoenix. Three vessels are sitting right here, all of them, CMA, CGM, the Jules Verne, the Tenere, and the Georgia. And then finally, the APM terminal, this is Maersk, has two vessels out of its three berths there, the Esmeraldas and the Ensenada. So the berths are not full by any means. We, we do not see, you know, large lines of vessels, so not full berths in use. So this is the Port of Los Angeles cargo operations dashboard where I grab all this information from. And two of the things I grabbed off here was the daily operation report. Here you go. 11 container ships on berth. Now, this was as of Friday uh, prior to the Labor Day holiday. They haven't updated this yet. So 11 container ships on berth, uh, zero vessels within 40 nautical uh, miles of it. And then nine vessels loitering, drifting, or slow steaming at 150 nautical miles. Five of them for the Port of Los Angeles, four of them for the Port of Long Beach. Interesting to note here that 78% of them are over 10,000 TUs. One of the big changes we've seen since the supply chain crisis is we've gotten rid of a lot of the smaller vessels that were coming in from these feeder lines that were basically doing opportune lifts. S&M line, CU line, express lines. Now we're back to the big liners and what you're seeing is bigger ships coming in. So grand total, nine ships off the berth. That's a huge low than where we've been in the past. And then out beyond 150 miles is 52 vessels scheduled to be coming in, evenly split between LA and Long Beach. That is not really significant in many ways. The big issue here is the terminal updates where you're seeing the numbers going down across the board in containers sitting on the terminal waiting to get out. So for example, uh, on deck rail waiting to load 29,924, that's down 2%. And even those nine days and older are down. Not a lot, but they're down. Let's take you over to the port op optimizer. So this is the report that the Port of LA does. Remember, we're just looking at LA. We're not looking at LA and Long Beach. So 11 ships on berth, 6.1 days is the average time at birth. So these ships are not cycling through as fast as they have been in the past. Now, sometimes they weren't moving this fast because they couldn't get the containers off. But now we've seen a slowdown in the movement of vessels. 88 planned vessels moving through, 166,000 planned containers. And then you look at these volumes for week uh, 36, 37, and 38. We are in week 36. 
But notice these bottom numbers down 28% from last year, down almost 17% from last year and scheduled to be down 1.13. Week 38 will change as they go a little bit out here. Seven vessels due in and notice where they're going. Two into that Phoenix terminal. These are the CMA CGM vessels coming in. One going into the YTI, the USAN terminal. That was that terminal that was wide open, nobody there. And then four uh, vessels going into TRAPAC. TRAPAC is the one that seems to be moving a lot. Notice nobody's scheduled to go into APM. The next Maersk ships aren't really scheduled. One's in the middle of the Pacific. One is still in China right now. So a lot of vessel movement still to be had here. Looking at the metrics of containers at the terminal, loaded containers are down. When we went back to the height back in October, you were talking about almost 90,000 containers were jammed in the terminals. Now they're down to 56,000 containers, but notice the biggest group is those waiting zero to four days. They've really put a big dent in those containers that have been sitting there for a long period of time. Empties, they were almost at 60,000, now down to 43,000. So how's the material going out of the terminals? Well, trucks, you'll see right there, 129,000 containers going out through trucks and most of them, 73.7, are waiting for zero to four days. Very few containers are sitting there for more than eight days waiting to get out by truck. Now, rail is a whole different story. 29,815 containers waiting, 35% over nine days. Chart at the bottom is the one I really wanted to show you here, the Port of LA weekly volumes. They compare 2021 and 2022. So the blue is the previous year, 2021. Purple is the, is the current year. And what you'll see is for most of the year, they've been pretty much in sync with each other. They kind of flipped here a little bit, but pretty much in sync. And that goes to the volumes we've seen. If you look at total container volumes for 2021, 2022 for Port of LA, they're only off by about 30,000 containers at the end of July. So you're sitting there going, wow, Port of LA just jamming along and, and, and everything. I'm gonna come back to why that's the issue. But what you begin to see here is the drop off. And what you'll notice here is a decrease in the number of containers being handled by the Port of LA versus last year where the number was going up. And the question is, why is that happening? Well, a couple of things. Number one, everybody knew that the Port of LA and Los Angeles and the whole West Coast had a labor issue coming up. The uh, ILWU, the International Longshoremen Warehouse Union, and the Pacific Maritime Association's contract went out on June 30th. And everybody was worried about what that meant. Now, while both sides sat there and said, don't worry, there's not gonna be a strike. Look what's happening in Europe. Look what's happening in Germany and Great Britain. Uh, everybody was worried about it. And so what has happened is two things. Number one, a lot of freight got front-ended into the first half of this year. This is why those volumes are so high for 2022. When everybody was talking for recession and freight falling, I forgot that everybody pushed that containers to the front end as much as they could in the first quarters of 2022. So Q1, Q2 has a lot of material in there that would normally be shipped in Q3, the third quarter. The other element is people have shifted where the containers are going uh, because of the issues with the backlogs and warehouse capacity in Southern California, in Ontario, the Inland Empire, because of rail issues and road issues and, 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 and trucking issues, a lot of shippers have decided to basically not shift entirely, but to diversify where their cargo comes. And so cargo is now being loaded, not just on ships to LA and Long Beach, they're still coming. We still see record levels coming in, but they're also heading on ships through the Panama Canal, that new lane of the Panama Canal that opened in 2016, that prior to 2016, the biggest container ships that go through the Panama Canal were 5,000 box ships. Now you can shove 15,000 box ships through and they're coming through to the East Coast or they're on those ultra large container vessels heading across the Indian Ocean through the Suez Canal to terminals in Europe and then being transloaded onto smaller vessels for shipment across the Atlantic. And this is why we're seeing the issue with the freight rates we're seeing. Let's take a look at some of this data a little bit more. I'm running through a series of slides. I pulled off some freight wave stories that I noticed. So this one is a great one. Shows you the uh, uh, ships waiting to get into LA and Long Beach. And you go back to October of 2020, there were only a handful of ships waiting there. We're, we're looking to be about in the same position, maybe coming in October this year, 
that we were back in 2020. And notice the really big spike took place in the summer of 2021 when we saw that. Climbed all the way up, all in the November of 2021, and then LA announced there, you know, we're, we're clearing the uh, port. And so they sent the ships to drift off port, but they were still there. And we reached 109 ships in early January of 2022. But what we've seen is that number has been going down, down to nine right now, sitting off the ports of LA and Long Beach. This again is that weight that you see there. And what you see here is how it manifests itself. Now, a lot of people were talking about, we're gonna see that number uptick in the fall of 2022, the third quarter of 2022, uh, and you know, see that same uptick, but we're not. And that's again, because of where the ships are shifting to. Uh, yes, we're still getting bigger ships coming into LA and Long Beach. That's still moving, a lot of cargo coming through LA and Long Beach, but now we're seeing a lot shift over to different areas. These are the number of TEUs coming in from August, uh, just August of this, of this year. And one of the things you see here is, is the level is pretty high. It's maintaining itself. We definitely saw that in August. We haven't seen really the numbers begin, but what we expect to see here starting in September is those numbers start to drop. Uh, normally you see it begin to drop October is usually when we see it. But because everything got freight pushed up forward there a lot, we're expecting to see freight start coming down here in September, the numbers coming in. But the other element here has got to be the shift of where ships are waiting. This is the waiting off port limit capacity. This is where basically containers are waiting either on the West Coast or off the East Coast. And notice here how much the East Coast has climbed. Take you back to marine traffic for a second. So this is the port of LA and Long Beach again. And if you zoom out here, you don't have that huge anchorage out here with all those green dots, green or cargo ships that you had back last year. Even if you zoom out further where they were hiding here off of Mexico and everything, you don't have them. You just have a few ships. However, if you jump over here to, for example, the port of Houston, this is where you start seeing them. You start seeing them. Here's the MSC Hong Kong, the CMA CGM Nerval the C-SPAN Frazier, the C-SPAN Santos, uh, C-MAX Mystic. Uh, you start to see all these container ships show up here and that's where they're starting to go. So they're off the port of Houston. They're also all the way up here off the port of New York, New Jersey. Come up here to New York, New Jersey. Here's that long line off the Southern coast of Long Island right here. MSC Mediterranean, Zim uh, Zhangdao, uh, the uh, Antwerpen Express, Hyundai Honor, that's probably actually a car carrier, that one right there. There's a Zim Monaco. So you see ships waiting to get in. And the place, if you really want to see them, as you come down to the southeast coast of the United States, this is the port of Savannah. And this is where they're jammed right now. So again, what we're seeing here is a diversification of where the cargo is going. But more importantly, we're also see, beginning to see the downward trend here of those containers. But we haven't seen it yet. Just because LA and Long Beach may not have the ships off the coast, and we saw that plea by Gene Soroka, hey, come on back to LA and Long Beach. We got space for you. And I follow uh, crane operators and, and port people in the port of LA. He's like, yeah, it's quiet in the terminals. Not a lot of ships coming in. That's because a lot of it <coughs> has shifted to the East Coast. Final is issue here is the plunging freight rates. And you hear this all the time, that freight rates are dropping off a cliff. This is the Freightos. This is their global container index. And you see it at 5,286, down 7%. If you look at it within the time span of the supply chain crisis, go back to March of 20. March of 20, you're looking at about 1,344. Right now, again, it's hitting at 5,286. That's four times higher than what it was pre-COVID. If you look at its max, right around here, uh, September 2021, uh, 11,109. So it's down 50% from where it was at its peak. Now, this is a composite index. This is not just from Asia to the West Coast or Asia from the East Coast. So it's decreased 50%. It has fallen off Mount Everest. We're halfway down Mount Everest, basically. But we're still pretty damn high. And that's the issue I keep coming back to, is where is this freight rate going to settle down? 
if you look at what's happening here and you look at the indexes here, for example, from China, East Coast to North America and West Coast, it's dropped. It's down 11%, right around $5,400 and $4,800 right there. If you look from China to the East Coast of the United States, still pretty high at 8364 This was a rate that was really low prior to everything happening. So freight rates are coming down, which is exactly what we want to see. However, there are other mechanisms that are at play here that a lot of people I don't think are accounting for right now. So number one, the ocean carriers, the, the nine big companies that control 85% of the containers are slowing down their passages to and from Asia to the United States and Europe. That's called blank sailing. And what they're trying to do is diminish the supply of container spaces out there, and that they hope will back up the freight rates. They are also going to start scrapping tonnage like crazy. Nothing got scrapped for the past two years in terms of container ships. That's all going to change. Ships are going to be heading to the beach in Turkey, in India, in Bangladesh, in Pakistan, and they're going to be scrapping tonnage like crazy. Uh, you're going to have issues with emissions and fuel that are going to raise freight costs for everybody. And so where freight rates stabilize, I'm not sure. The big watch right now is going to be the next month or so, see where everything stabilizes once the big, huge surge of shipping is off. We get into the last quarter of this year, into the first quarter of next year, we hit things like Chinese New Year, Golden Week, and then March, which is typically the slowest shipping month, but past two have not. They've been banged through the roof. Uh, we're going to see a much different level of ocean rates and ocean shipping. I don't think we ever get back to those pre-COVID rates because I don't think the ocean shippers are going to allow it to happen. They just reported the second quarter as windfall profits over $60 billion in profits, trying to get John McCowan to come on and talk about his latest report on this. Uh, I think we got to be very careful about where everything goes. There's a lot of people with crystal balls trying to predict things, but I, I think you need to be smart, watch smart people, keep an eye on this information so that you know what's going on. Don't think for a second, just because there's no ships waiting off of LA and Long Beach, that the supply chain crisis maritime side is done. You just got to look at Houston, Savannah, New York, New Jersey to see where the ships went. All right. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I apologize for my cough. Still getting over this congestion. But if you enjoyed today's video, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, share it across social media. And if you can, support the page. You can do that by one of two ways. One, hit that super thanks button below that allows you to contribute directly to the page or become a Patreon, support the page through a monthly or annual fee. Uh, it allows me to get cough medicine and maintain myself, but more importantly, subscribe to new sources and, and a lot of sites, uh, Fredo's, for example, is open for everyone. But when you want to dig into the details, you need to have a subscription. So until our next video, Sal, signing off.